Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how you can enforce Drucker stability in the material calibration when you use M calibration. So in my example, I have experimental data, as you can see in this window here, it's time, strain, and stress. And uh, I'm going to try to calibrate the material model. You'll see that this particular file will present some uh, problems for us. So I'm going to go to this file here. I'm just going to copy it to the clipboard. And I'm going to uh, switch over to an empty M calibration window. And I'm going to paste this in. And one way to do that is just clicking on menu item edit and paste. And uh, it plots true stress strain, but I want to plot engineering stress, engineering strain, because that's what, what we saw was in this particular file. So what do we have here? Well, we have some interesting experimental data that's clearly not stable. Remember, drug stability is a situation that occurs when you increase the strain, the stress decreases. So that is an unstable material response. And that that is uh, indeed the case here. So let's try to first calibrate just a generic hyperelastic material to this without being concerned about the Drucker stability. And we'll see how that goes. So I'm going to set a material here. I'll switch down to ANSYS. I'm going to pick an ANSYS third order YO hyperelastic mall. And uh, clearly there is a reason for picking this particular YO mall. It's a third order polynomial. And it should be able to match this kind of interesting crazy response. So I'm going to first save this file to my computer. Here it is. Uh, before I calibrate it, let's take a look at the parameters here. Um, I want to search for C10, C20, and C30, because all of them are important in this case. And if I just run this once now, we'll see that the predictions in dash here is not very good. Clearly, it's not matching the the wild uh, prediction, uh, experimental data. So we'll have to search for these parameters. And I'm going to do that by running uh, the calibration itself. So I'm going to run calibration, extensive automatic. We'll see how that goes. And uh, we'll click Run. And then we'll go to Optimization. We'll see if the software is able to uh, fix this problem for us. And then look, at, after a few small number of iterations, we already have a very good fit to this prediction. So I'm going to stop it here. We can see that there is a, a really good agreement, but it's not stable. This material model is probably isn't directly stable, right? We can see that because it goes down. The stress goes down and the stress strain goes up. Um, so there are all kinds of ideas one can do here to constrain these parameters using theory in order to make sure that it's stable. But you don't need to worry about that. M calibration can take care of that for you. So first though, let's take a look at the stability conditions as we have them with this particular material model. So I'm going to click on this icon here, check the stability of my material model. I get this dialog box. I click on evaluate. We'll see, interestingly enough, that only two of the loading modes that are tested, biaxial tension and biaxial compression, are reported as being unstable. The software reports that uniaxial tension is stable, but it only checks up to a given strain level, in this case, 50% strain. And if you look at the graph behind here, it is stable up to that point. So that brings up the idea of Drucker stability is only valid in a certain range sometimes. You can have a material model, like in this case, that is stable up to some strain, but perhaps not to larger strains. Um, let's look at the biaxial tension data. We'll see that in biaxial tension, we do have this drop that occurs earlier than it occurs in uniaxial tension. All right, how can we fix this? Say we want this to be stable. Well, one way to do that is to double click on this load case and add a fitness weight to Drucker stability. So now if you do this, M calibration will uh, give a poor uh, fitness, a poor value when it evaluates parameters that causes the material model to be unstable. So I'm going to give it a very high a penalty for solutions to happen to be unstable. So I'm going to pick a penalty weight factor of 10,000 here. Let's see if that's good. I say OK. If I run once, it doesn't really change much here. We'll see that at the bottom, n month fitness with weight factor is not 102. So it's a very large uh, fitness value there, simply because we added this penalty and this happened to be an unstable configuration. So 
uh, unstable drug stability configuration. So I just search for this again. I'm going to say OK. And uh, the software will start to manipulate these parameters in order to avoid drug stability if it can. And it, I'm going to stop it right away. You see that it, it solves this by adjusting the parameters such that it doesn't drop. There is no drop in stress uh, along this curve here. So that's one way you can ensure that your material model uh, is uh, Drucker stable. Um, this, of course, is not a, such a good match anymore, but at least it's Drucker stable. So you have to uh, decide yourself if you want your material model to be Drucker stable, or if you want to do more experiments to make sure that the material indeed is unstable according to Drucker condition or not. But this is how you would uh, actually force it to be Drucker stable using M calibration. Um, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below.